Good morning, Facebook. How are you? Instagram, we got everyone signed on. Uh, welcome to Mystic Fitness Outdoors on Victory Field. Um, we are here with some of our lovely uh, Mystic students. We have Larry, uh, Mary Beth, Susie, Corey, Cheryl, and Myrna. So we have a nice full house here. Um, nice breeze coming through. Thank you guys uh, for joining us. Quick announcement, we will be doing outdoor classes through July 11th every morning at 9 a.m. outside on Victory Field. So if you have any interest in coming, please show up uh, at least 15 minutes early. You can park at Mystic and then walk down with all of your gear with you. Um, I recommend bringing some sort of uh, blanket or double mat that way because sometimes the grass is a little damp at this time of the day. So um, if you have a towel or a uh, two mat to kind of eliminate some of the dew that gets on your uh, practice mat. Um, and uh, added bonus, there's a bunch of little blackberries growing over there so you can have a little snack on your way out. <laughs> uh, so we're still streaming every morning at 9 a.m. live. So if you don't feel comfortable coming out or if you don't have the time to come out, you can always um, visit us uh, virtually. You can always check in back uh, later and the classes will be archived on our Facebook page YouTube, and YouTube page as well. Um, so there's plenty of options to get your practice in. So use as many as you can. Um, we super appreciate it. We're still taking donations through Mystic Fitness Venmo account. Um, of course, in no way are they necessary to enjoy our content. But if you are in a financial situation where you feel comfortable enough to make a donation and you feel moved to, um, we will be accepting those. And you'll get one of Mary Beth's handmade masks. She's been so hard at work uh, making these masks for our community. They're reusable, they're washable, very comfortable. Um, or you can opt into getting some of our gently used uh, materials for your home studio, such as blocks, mats, towels, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, you can come into a comfortable position, so either laying down or seated, even in a child's pose, or just any area where you feel comfortable and you can drop into your breath. Allow your eyes to close. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Drop into a natural rhythm of breath that soothes your soul. Perhaps you're taking your practice outside as well, even though you're not on Victory Field with us. You're listening to all the sounds around you. And when we come on to the physical earth like this, we're able to become more grounded this is actually a process called earthing. In the same way that you have electrical wires that you would ground, the earth is grounded. We can take our uh, positive electrons in our body and transfer them for some negative electrons from the earth and in turn making you feel more balanced. And a lot of times yoga is about harnessing these natural remedies to soothing your soul, soothing your being, such as breath, such as earthing, movement. All of these are so fundamental for our health. Now that our physical bodies have arrived on the mat, it's time for our mental and emotional bodies to kind of arrive as well and catch up. Allowing any circling energy that came before coming onto your mats to just melt into the earth. I'm taking five more breaths here.
on your next breath, start to expand through your chest a little more. Be starting to bring some gentle wiggling through the fingers and toes. And whether you're laying down or seated, just taking any little movements that start to kind of begin this process of movement. Perhaps pulling the knees into the chest if you're laying down or if you're seated, maybe reaching the arms up overhead and finding a stretch. <clears throat> And then taking the next couple moments here to slowly pick yourself back up into your seat, taking your time to arrive and moving in any manner that feels good throughout your journey. Once you've arrived, bringing your hands over heart, either palms together at the chest or planting the palms over your chest. for a moment just kind of tuning in to anything that's arising emotionally or physically and using the next hour of our practice to really just connect to that dialogue that happens between breath and sensation rather than the dialogue that goes on within the mind we'll begin our practice with the single sound of om starting with a cleansing breath to prepare breathing in and out and for om inhale oh. have an inspiring practice with the inhale, let's circle sweep the arms up to the sky. And we'll just start to roll the wrists out a couple times here in all directions, maybe even opening and closing the palms. <clears throat> just kind of preparing our wrists for a little bit of weight bearing throughout our practice. And even giving them a nice good shake here if that calls your name. And then turning this into some shoulder circles, so either bringing the shoulders up and away from the ears one at a time, or maybe doing a backstroke type of motion, and then a front stroke. Anything here that starts to open up the shoulders, upper back, chest area. And then when you're ready, we'll arrive in our table pose. So take your time to get there. You can plant the hands below you, wrists. Uh, stack below the shoulders, knees below those hips. With the inhale, we're dropping the chest, gazing forward. And with the exhale, curling and rounding through the spine and really pressing that floor away. Inhale, arch and open. Exhale, curl and round. So taking these motions here, just kind of allowing your spine to start to open up and create some space through those vertebrae. Even letting your neck get involved as you find that cat pose, really dropping your head, tucking the chin. And then as you open up your chest, maybe gazing up, opening the throat. Taking these motions here and a just natural progression. So this is kind of our first cue where we can start to listen to the dialogue of our breath uh, and sensation. So that means that we're using our body to guide us through each movement rather than letting our brain and mind kind of rule our movements. Let this be supernatural and just open you up uh, with each movement. So that breath is opening through the lungs and then contracting through the lungs, taking some nice deep breaths through each motion. And then you'll notice now that we're connected to that dialogue through sensation, you can start to take some more organic movements. So perhaps some back and forth presses, maybe finding some nice big sweeping hip circles, pelvic bowl rotations. Uh, all of these movements here are being ruled by that uh, body. Let the body take charge here. You can even drop down onto the forearms and give the wrists a break, maybe even alternating between a child's pose and then opening up front into an upward facing dog like motion. <clears throat> and 
and eventually letting this carry you into a child's pose where we'll take a moment to just check back in, let those hips sink back, the arms can reach long in front of you or maybe behind you. Open your palms and press them into the earth. Feel that energy transfer from your palms into the earth and from the earth into your palms. And as we're in this bowing position, I want you to imagine any tension that's been building the last couple of days, maybe weeks, maybe months, any of that stress or anxiety, pack it into a backpack. <clears throat> and then just kind of unload it onto the earth. Take one more deep breath in and out. Slowly starting to return back to center, finding a nice flat back here. So the fingers are spread and the palms are pressing into the earth. Start by taking the right toes and extending them to the back of your mat. You might even reach the grass, keeping the toes on the ground and taking some back and forth presses here so we can get into the uh, connective tissue through our calf and through the arch of the foot, kind of giving it a gentle stretching especially if you're doing some extra running or hiking, it should feel really nice to stretch through the calf. <clears throat> and then once you've had your fill, you're gonna pick the right toes up off of the ground, but keep the heel in line with the hip. And then perhaps maybe that left arm extends forward for an extended table. So with the inhale, we're engaging and pulling the limbs apart from one another. And then with the exhale, we're pulling the knee and elbow towards the midline. So inhale is another extending, squeeze that right glute and exhale, curling in. Five more, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, extend once again, hold for five, flex that right foot, four, three, two, one, landing back into your table pose, readjusting here, taking any little wiggles before sending the left toes behind you and then taking those back and forth presses. So the left toes stay on the mat or on the earth to start, just taking that stretch through the calf an arch of the foot. You might notice one side is a little tighter than the other. And then finding your extended table by reaching the left toes up off the ground, but keeping the heel in line with the hip. Once you're secure, maybe that right arm pulls forward, but it's not necessary. The inhale is your extended table, pulling the limbs apart. The exhale is a pulling of the elbow and knee into the midline. Inhale, extend. Exhale, curl, in and out, five, you guys look amazing, four, three, two, and one, let's hold in that extended table, five, four, three, two, one, and release into your table pose. Rock those hips side to side, perhaps sink back into a child's pose for a moment. And then let's take it into our downward facing dog when you're ready. So tuck those toes under, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Start to pedal your feet here, bending and extending through the knees, dropping one heel down and then the other heel down, taking some alternating through the feet. <clears throat> and we have eight viewers with us. Awesome. So this is our first downward dog of the morning, presumably. So make sure you take it nice and slow. We're going to accurately uh, warm up through those hamstrings. <clears throat> and if downward dog is not your jam yet, you can always stay in that table pose for as long as you like. Keep pedaling here for a couple more breaths. And then we'll turn these into some back and forth presses. So with the inhale, we're dropping those knees to a hover for our bent knee dog. 
with the exhale extending forward to a plank pose but making sure those shoulders do not go past the wrist so inhale is a peeling of the hips up and back bend through the knees exhale to your plank pose now these can always be taken with the knees on the ground alternating between a child's pose and a supported plank pose so choose whatever variation you like we'll take about three or so more at your own pace with your own breath notice the engagement that has to happen through the quads calves and also that core fingers need to be planted into the ground on your last one let's hold in your plank pose press the heels back crown reaches forward one line from the heels to the crown of your head squeeze through those abdominals keep a gentle bend through the elbows with your inhale hold and with your exhale lower those knees to the ground finding a variation of low cobra by slowly lowering all the way down with those elbows pointing back inhale for your low cobra by keeping your chin tucked but lifting that chest off your mat elbows come towards the back and exhale release transitioning back to your downward facing dog perhaps visiting a table pose along the way pedal your feet out of here a little more notice how the body is starting to open up in a very natural progression rather than forcing our way into any openings <sighs> inhale bend the knees gaze forward with the exhale, walk or gently hop to the front of your mat for a forward fold. Pausing in your forward fold for a moment with a deep bend through those knees. You can really relax the lower back. Perhaps you even take the elbows or forearms on top of the thighs as a little place of rest there. Or coming into your ragdoll pose by letting your upper body hang very heavy. Grabbing onto opposite elbow, swaying, shaking the head yes and no. There goes the church bells. Do they, do they do they go 15 minutes after the hour? Huh. The clock is usually wrong. Oh, the <laughs> clock is wrong. <laughs> so don't go by the clock coming from the common. <laughs> Look at your phones. Look at your watches on your wrists. <clears throat> or maybe you use that as an excuse as to why you're late for work. <laughs> inhale for a halfway lift planting the fingertips onto your shins this is an active pose so we're squeezing the pelvic floor and your exhale is a release and surrender <sighs> inhale slowly circle sweep the arms reach up to the sky and exhale hands to heart grounding down here pressing the feet into the earth palms together maybe you gaze up towards the sky or tree top tree tops inhale circle sweep the arms up to the sky and exhale pull that energy towards your heart as you hinge from the hips forward fold inhale halfway lift and exhale hands plant stepping or hopping back to your plank pose now choosing if you want to keep those knees lifted or drop them with your inhale exhale lower halfway or all the way for a chaturanga inhale up dog or low cobra and exhale downward facing dog two breaths in your downward facing dog <sighs> inhale bend the knees gaze forward with the exhale walk or hop to the front of your mat forward fold inhale halfway lift exhale fold inhale circle sweep the arms reach up to the sky and exhale hands to heart <sighs> making sure the feet are hip distance apart here finding our chair squat so really plant the feet into the ground inhale circle sweep the arms to the sky and with the exhale we're going to pull the hands to the heart and sink those hips back in your chair pose wow that looks so cool on our screen we're all taking a little seat here so you want to make sure that the knees are pressing away from each other, but the inner thighs are pulling in towards one another. So there's a little bit of contrast here of a pushing and pulling to really secure yourself in that chair pose. With the inhale, let's rise, squeeze the glutes, press the pelvis forward, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, hinge into your chair. Inhale, rise and lift. Exhale, chair three 
two, and one. With the exhale, holding in your chair pose. Breathe for five, four, three. Sink those hips down a little lower. Two, and one. Hinge from the hips, forward fold. Shake the head, yes and no. Maybe coming into a little deeper variation of a forward fold, maybe bending and extending through the knees. Maybe even giving yourself a little hug and bringing the palms kind of uh, behind the calves there. Releasing any gri grip you're working with, inhale to your halfway lift. And exhale, hands plant, stepping back to your plank pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, prepare. With the exhale, find a strong chaturanga, lowering halfway or all the way. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths. Inhale, right leg sweeps up to the sky, perhaps bending and extending a couple times and even opening up that hip by dialing the right heel over to the left side, <sighs> rotating at the ankle. Square the hips, right toes up to the sky, and then with the exhale, curl the knee in towards the chest. Hold here. Inhale, re-extend, sweep the toes to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest. Step to your runner's lunge. In your runner's lunge, make sure that that right foot is planted into the earth. Feet are hip distance apart. And then we'll find our hover by pulling the arms back, extending the crown forward. So we're in this airplane-like lunge. So there's a contrast of the arms pulling back and that left leg pressing for the back of the room and the crown and the chest pulling for the front of the room. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, rise to your crescent lunge. Arms pull up overhead. Find a gentle bend to that back left knee. And the exhale, come back to that hover. So the arms pull back, extend the left leg, crown reaches forward. Inhale, crescent lunge. And exhale, hover. Two more here, inhale, rise, and exhale, hover. Last one, inhale to the sky, and exhale, hover and hold here. Bringing the left fingertips onto your block, and then opening up to a twist towards the right. Beautiful, so those right fingertips can either sweep up to the sky, or we can take a variation with the right fingertips towards right hip. Press even more into that right foot. You might even decide to walk that right foot to the outer edge of your mat just to touch. Nice adjustments. Last inhale. And with the exhale, slowly lower. Dial left heel down and cartwheel yourself open to your warrior two. Getting a little change of scenery. Now facing the opposite side of the field. In your warrior two, take a moment to just adjust and feel what this feels like. So the right toes to the front of the mat and the back edge of the left foot to the back of the mat. Notice if that right knee is going past right ankle and try to stack those joints. Open your palms up to the sky. Maybe you gaze up, open your throat with the inhale and exhale. Inhale, extend through the right leg. Fingertips come to touch above your head. And with the exhale, warrior two. Inhale, rise. Exhale, warrior. One more time here. Inhale, lift. And exhale, warrior. Hold here. Flip right palm. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, extend your warrior. Hold in your extended side angle, perhaps rotating through left arm a couple times, creating some nice big sweeping circles in one direction. And then the other, it might feel nice to rest that right forearm on top of the right thigh or even take the palm to the thigh. 
and then we'll find the best variation of the side angle you can muster here. So either extending the right arm long, maybe it reaches in front of your crown to really engage through the abdominals here for three, two, and one. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, cartwheeling hands down to your runner's lunge. Hands plant, right foot steps back, plank pose. Breathing in. And with the exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take two breaths in and out. Remembering that you can take a drink of water at any time. Inhale, left toes, reach up, and then play around with some movement here, maybe bending and extending through left leg, rotating the ankle, opening up the hip. Eventually squaring left hip, reach the toes up to the sky, and with the exhale, curl the knee in towards the chest, hold. Inhale, re-extend, reach it up. Exhale, knee to chest, step to your runner's lunge. Again, making sure the feet are hip distance apart, left foot is plugged into the earth, ball of the right toe behind you. Coming into your airplane lunge, so palms pull back with the palms facing the ground, the crown of the head reaches forward. We're feeling this contrast of pressing forward and reaching back, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, rise to your crescent lunge. Find a gentle bend to that back right knee. And with the exhale, return back to that hover, lengthening that bend through the right knee. Inhale, lift, crescent lunge. And exhale, hover. Two more, in. And out. Last one here, in. And out, hold here, pull those fingertips to the back, and then dropping right hand on your block, opening up left fingertips up to the sky. So finding that runner's lunge twist. Again, that back knee can always drop to the ground if this is a little too intense. Notice if you need to walk that left foot out to the left just a touch, it really stabilizes those hips to have the feet hip distance apart. Here's your last inhale to engage in your twist. And with the exhale, slowly coming out of it, dialing right heel down and cartwheeling open to your warrior two on the opposite side. Take a moment in your warrior two. Set it up. Left toes to the front of your mat, back edge of the right foot to the back of your mat. So again, in this pose as well, there's the gentle contrast of the front leg pressing forward and the back leg pressing backwards. Another breath here. Open the palms up to the sky. With the inhale, extend through left leg. Fingertips come up over your head. And with the exhale, warrior two. Inhale, extend through left leg. Fingertips come up over your head. And exhale, warrior two. Two more here. Inhale, extend and rise. Exhale, warrior. Inhale. And exhale, warrior, hold here. Flip left palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. And with the exhale, extend your warrior. Perhaps letting that left forearm come on top of left thigh as you rotate through that right arm this time. You might even bring the left palm on top of the thigh as you take those rotations through right arm, taking them in the opposite direction when that calls to you. And then letting this carry you into your best side angle. So choose whatever variation works best for you. Notice that those hips are pressing back and try to keep them tucked right below your shoulders. Inhale. And exhale. One more round. Coming out of it, inhale, reverse your warrior. And with the exhale, cartwheel hands down, back to your runner's lunge, hands plant, left foot steps back to meet right. Let's hold here for a moment, breathe in, breathe out. 
Dial the heels over to the right. Open left arm up to the sky, finding a side plank. That left foot can always drop to the ground uh, and kind of support you, or you can drop that right knee to the ground. Press those hips up with the inhale and exhale. One more inhale, stick with it. With the exhale, coming back to your plank pose and then dialing the heels over to the left, open right fingertips up to the sky. Press those hips up. Take any modification here as you breathe in and out press those hips up last inhale with the exhale come back into your plank pose holds for the inhale exhale chaturanga nicely done inhale up dog or low cobra and exhale downward facing dog perhaps dropping the knees to the ground and finding a quick drink or toweling off any sweat and the sun is not out but it is definitely humid <laughs> Do you guys have any recommendations for balancing postures that we're dying to get into? <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> eagle? Let's do an eagle. Sounds good. When you are ready and you're done with your little break, let's find a downward facing dog by tucking the toes under, lifting those hips up and back. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward, and with the exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, press through the feet, circle sweep the arms up to the sky, and exhale, hands to heart. So take a moment on your mat to just kind of find some sort of uh, grounding area. Sometimes it's a little bumpy. Awesome. So find that place where you can plug both feet into the ground. Inhale, arms circle sweep to the sky. And then with the exhale, opening the arms up into a T and dropping right arm underneath left arm, coming into an eagle bind with the arms. So either bringing those palms to touch or grabbing onto opposite shoulder here, kind of giving yourself a hug. For a moment, you can kind of rock from side to side with those arms, especially in your, if you're in that full eagle grip to kind of just warm up the shoulders maybe even dipping down into a little forward fold and then reaching up into a gentle back bend and then landing in your preferred position right in the midline planting both feet into the ground sinking those hips back into your uh, chair pose and then taking the right leg out to the right and crossing it up and over left leg coming into your eagle variation so a couple variations might just be taking that right leg and crossing it but keeping the right toes on the ground so you're going to notice if you're practicing outdoors it's a little bit more challenging to balance on the uh, grass you might find that full bind by letting the right foot come behind left calf if this is a little challenging for you try sinking those hips down a little bit more and sending the shoulders back so that the shoulders are stacked on top of hips. Breathing is very important here. This is a very grounding pose. Great for the root chakra. Great for all of the joints. And what we're doing is we're constricting some of our blood flow. And then as we start to unwrap through that right leg and send it behind us for a warrior three variation. So right foot is flexed and reaching behind you. Feel that blood flow transfer from that bind through the legs and now having it open. Beautiful. Now to finish this off, we're going to try to wrap back into our eagle pose. If you can, that right leg wraps up and over left for one inhale and exhale. Inhale, circle sweep. Drop that right foot to the ground and exhale, hands to heart. <sighs> Coming into it on the other side, you might shake it up a little bit. And then circle sweep the arms up to the sky. Exhale, arms out into a T and then dropping left arm underneath right, wrapping it, either coming again into that full bind and taking some little side to side motions. Forward fold and then up. 
just kind of preparing our upper body for holding this. You might even grab onto opposite L, uh, shoulders. And then planting the weight into the right foot, sinking those hips back to a chair pose for a moment. And then taking that left leg up and over right leg. So again, those left toes can just land on the mat or you can find that full bind of letting the left foot come behind right calf. Sink those hips down a little bit lower. Press the shoulders back, keep everything nice and stacked. Squeeze those limbs together, trying to press the knees against one another. Inhale. With the exhale, start to unwind through left leg, flex the foot and send it behind you for a warrior three variation with eagle arms. So left leg is squeezing hard. Feel that blood flow start to move through the legs after coming out of that bind. Here's your inhale. And slowly and with control, let's come back to our eagle by trying to bring that left leg up and over right leg. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, arm circle sweep up, land back in a mountain pose. And exhale, hands to heart. Let's shake it up a little bit. Maybe empty coat sleeve from side to side. So anytime we're holding a really static posture, it's always good to kind of follow that up with a little bit of movement. Let's walk to the back of our mats here. So bring your feet to the very back of your mat. Inhale, arms circle sweep up to the sky. Bringing exhale, hands to heart and stepping that right foot forward just a couple inches. From here, we're gonna find our warrior three once again by extending that left leg behind us. Breathe in and breathe out. Start to pull left knee into the chest. Give it a squeeze, coming into a standing wind relieving pose. Interlacing the hands on left shin, perhaps rotating left ankle. And then turning this into our tree pose. So we're getting into our tree pose a little bit differently today. So you're either gonna bring the left toes to the ground right next to right ankle and just open up that hip or creep up somewhere that isn't the knee. So you might even bring that left hand to assist. So the right leg is locked in so strong that the left foot can press against right thigh or uh, shin area, and that can lock you into your tree pose. Now again, balance is nothing uh, that you can ever truly conquer, right? Gravity is always going to be a little bit of a challenge as long as we're in this world. So just be kind to yourself, maybe even gaze at your favorite tree in front of you, whatever is calling your name. Maybe the arms reach up. Two more breaths here, in and out. To come out of this, we're gonna step that left foot to the back of your mat once again, and then step right foot to the back of your mat. Beautiful. Taking it to the other side. So inhale, arm circle sweep to the sky. Exhale, hands to heart and stepping left foot forward this time, finding a quick warrior three. So extending that right leg behind you, flexed foot. That right hip is dialing down, chest is open just a touch. Inhale. With the exhale, start to pick right knee up towards the chest. Stand, uh, standing wind relieving pose by squeezing that right knee into the chest. Rotating right ankle. <clears throat> and then turning this into your favorite variation of tree. So that might also be a Bikram variation. We have Larry over here taking the Bikram style. And that right foot will land anywhere other than that left knee. And the powerhouse of this pose, once again, is that standing leg locked and strong. And that balancing leg, that right foot, is going to press into left thigh or leg. That's why, that way we want it to um, really lock us into this pose. Arms can start to grow here if you like. We'll find three more breaths. Let your roots grow into the earth. 
Here's your last inhale and exhale. To come out of it, we'll send that right foot behind us, left foot steps back to meet right, uh, mountain pose. Inhale, arm circle, sweep to the sky. And with the exhale, hinge from the hips, find a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands plant, walk them forward until you come into your plank pose. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, hold, and with the exhale, find your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths. Inhale, right leg sweeps up to the sky, and with the exhale, pull right knee towards right wrist. We're going to come into our pigeon pose. If you prefer to take your pigeon pose in a reclined position, you can find yourself on your backs. A couple options that exist for you guys are bringing that block underneath right glute or simply opening up left knee out to the left. In your pigeon pose, you want to make sure that that right thigh is parallel to the long edge of your mat. So the knee and hip are in one line. You might choose to keep that chest lifted for a couple breaths. Or you might simply just hinge forward and enjoy your pigeon pose here for several breaths. So notice how the practice is starting to kind of transition into a different phase. Enjoying the sensation of just kind of letting your shoulders and neck be soft. You might consider placing a pillow or block underneath the forehead. And taking these postures as we are literally on the earth is such a profound experience. Really connecting us to the elements. And this is deeply rooted within us. Being outdoors and being able to find movement on the grass. Something so primal within us that craves this. We'll find two more breaths here. As you prepare to come out of it, slowly start to prop yourself up. Tuck left toes under and then reach uh, back into your downward facing dog. You might find a three-legged dog for a breath. And then we'll take it to the left side when you're ready. So eventually left toes sweep up to the sky. And with the exhale, left knee towards left wrist. Kind of sitting yourself down here. Again, you can take a block underneath left hip or open right knee out to the right. And you can always take this in a reclined position as well. With the inhale, perhaps opening up your chest, staying lifted and then choosing to hinge forward whenever you're ready. Again, just making sure that that left thigh is parallel to the long edge of your mat. This is one of those poses where you need a little bit of soft energy moving through your breath, a little bit of surrender moving through the parts of you that um, are still holding on to anything, even in the shoulders and neck. Even in your jaw, notice if you're holding any tension within that jaw, muscles of the face. I think a lot of yoga is connecting to the subtle energies that exist, so that very simple presence. Just the simplicity of hearing the birds. Simplicity of feeling a gentle breeze. Any emotions beginning to arise, letting them know that they are welcome. 
few more breaths here. Slowly starting to pick yourself back up. <clears throat> this time tucking right toes under and extending back to a downward facing dog. Perhaps pedaling your feet or finding a three-legged dog on the left side. And then we're going to come onto our backs. So come onto your knees, take any drink of water or adjustments. And then we'll come all the way down onto our backs. Crown can be forward or feet can be forward. It doesn't really matter here. <laughs> Take a nice long stretch when you're on your back. If you're reaching those arms up overhead, rotating wrists and ankles. Pulling the knees into the chest, giving yourself a squeeze. Maybe a little rocking side to side. And then dropping the soles of the feet onto the earth and coming into a bridge-like position. So the heels are towards the uh, glutes here, arms alongside body with the palms facing down. Press the, uh, press the feet into the earth, start to tuck that pelvis and slowly rise to a bridge pose. And with the exhale, slowly roll back down. Take two more of these rolling bridges just to prepare your body. Inhale, rise. And exhale, lower. This time, inhale as you rise. We're going to hold here. Squeeze through those glutes. If this is a little too intense, you can always place a block underneath the sacrum, coming into a, a more supported like bridge. You might even choose to take a couple pulse uh, up and down. So let those... Uh, hips lower just a touch and then press them back up. Really squeeze those two glutes. Take a couple dips here if that's calling you. Last little push here for three, two, one. And slowly lower. Bring the soles of the feet together. Knees flop out to the outer edges of your mat. If this is too intense, this reclining bound angle, you might prefer to bring... Uh, Blocks underneath the thighs so they're not just floating in mid space. Allow the eyes to close. Just kind of cherish this little movement for a moment. And then letting the knees come back to center, lengthening left leg down your mat and pulling right knee into the chest, finding a wind relieving pose. So we're squeezing that right knee in, avoiding the rib cage by letting the knee, uh, right leg come out to the right just a touch and then pulling it back to the midline. Turning this into your twist by letting the right arm open out to the right, le uh, right leg open up towards the left. So letting that right leg cross over to your body. You might choose to bring a block underneath right knee here so it's not just floating. Or you can bend both knees, let them stack with a block sandwiched in between them. That might feel really lovely here as well. These last couple movements we do on our mat are so important for our internal organs. So this twisting is kind of like a wringing out of a cloth, like when you wring a cloth out of all of its water, kind of wringing out the spine of any toxins, as well as the stomach and, you know, all those internal organs. As you come back to center, lengthen right leg down the mat and pull left knee into the chest, coming into your reclining wind relieving pose. Making sure you're avoiding the left rib cage by letting that left leg kind of open up to the left and then pulling it back into the center. Again, another great 
uh, posture for our internal organs and digestive system. Then letting this take you into your twist on the opposite side. So left leg crosses over to the right, left arm open to the left, gaze wherever feels best, and blocks can be used in a couple different ways here. So again, that block underneath left knee, or maybe blocks uh, in between the knees as they stack on top of one another. Very important to have those breaths moving here, especially those exhales to relax and soften. Two more breaths. As you come out of this pose, take any last posture of your choice. So perhaps a happy baby or another reclining bound angle, maybe a waterfall pose by reaching the legs up towards the sky with a block underneath the sacrum. Whatever feels lovely. Take about three more breaths wherever you choose. When you're ready, arriving in your final resting position, taking your time to get there, taking any adjustments you need to make sure your body can fall into a comfortable location. Let's find a cleansing breath. Breathe in and let it go. One more. And then coming into a natural breath, preferably in and out through the nose if you can. The reason behind this is because when we are outside, there's actually terpenes uh, within the trees and the grass. And when we breathe in through the nose, we're allowing all of those nutrients like pinene and limonene kind of move into the system. That's what's so uh, rejuvenating about the fresh air. holistic and simple way to detox anything that no longer belongs within your body. I actually learned a cool fact the other day. Uh, if you ever lose, uh, you know, if you ever go on a diet and you lose a couple pounds, um, this is actually through exhales that you lose the first bit of that weight, which is super interesting. So your breath is really uh, the backbone when it comes to all of your systems within the body. So your digestive system, cardiovascular system, immune system, all of it really dependent on that breath. And that breath kind of clears the mind of any clutter. And now as we lay here together, I invite you to inwardly ask your soul How are you? At first it might feel a little silly, but just try it. And you'll notice the soul starts to speak back to you, maybe not through words, 
maybe through something a little bit more subtle. So ask yourself, ask your soul, how are you? How are you, Kelly? How are you, Mary Beth? Mary? How are you, Myrna? Cheryl? How are you, Corey and Susie? How are you, soul? And sometimes the emotion that arises can be so profound. Look at the magic you can begin to unlock when you just bring your attention to the simplicity of presence. With your next inhale, start to expand your breath. And without allowing uh, the mind to kind of take over, start to create a little movements back into the physical body. Letting your awareness trickle back in. Wiggling the toes and fingers. With the next three or so breaths, just slowly starting to bring yourself back up into your meditative seat, taking whatever journey you need to get there. Then bringing yourself back into your seat, bringing the hands over your heart. <clears throat> And again, just letting your soul come forward. Communicate whatever it has to communicate to you or to the environment around you. Notice the power in communication and community. We'll seal our practice in with the sound of Om, starting with a cleansing breath, breathing in and out. And for Om, in. And the loving soul within me bows to the loving soul within you. Namaste. Thank you guys all so much for coming. I really appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much. Um, and for all of you online, thank you guys for attending another virtual class through Mystic Fitness. Uh, like I said, we will be going forward through uh, July 11th um, outdoors. 
and also streaming them to you guys. So if you feel like you want to come out and take a visit, uh, you can park your car at Mystic Fitness and walk over to Victory Field with all of your gear. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find us. Please reach out to us. Uh, and namaste. Take care. Bye, everyone.